Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praise to the Most High God. Another blessed day, now opportunity to get it in. A blessed Sabbath day. All praise to the Father. You understand? Um, just was going over Deuteronomy chapter thirty with my wife and children, and um, just want to share with y'all some just key elements of what was pulled and extracted from it, and um, mainly in regards to the two greatest commandments, because we we often hear people say. You know what? Well, we really just got to keep the two greatest commandments, you know, and um, and that's it. You know, as believers in and under the new covenant, you understand. But what it actually means, the first greatest commandment is key. You feel me? And that's what I want to touch on. So the first greatest commandment, you understand, which is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength. And with all thy mind. That literally means, y'all, to obey God, to obey God's voice and his commandments. That's what the first greatest commandment actually means. Now, we should already know that, but we know there's a lot of um, different speculations and things that, um, you know, that that's taught in today's time in regards to, you know, but. Obviously, there's no way of getting around obeying God's voice. Now, if we his children, you understand what I'm saying. And we under the new covenant, we believe in Christ and believe in him for righteousness. You know, that belief and that faith, you know, will be backed by works and works of, you know, the, the fruit of repentance, the fruit of changing. You know what I'm saying? The fruit of turning from that which is sin to that which is right. In the sight of God, you understand. But the greatest commandment literally means, which is the first one, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. Literally means to obey God, his voice and his commandments. Okay. And and the beauty of this all in Deuteronomy, it touches on the circumcision of the heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, this circumcision is key because... Is needed now. God said He's going to do this for us, and He going to circumcise our hearts and the hearts of our seed, that we may be able to love, that we may be able to love Him with all our hearts and with all our soul, that we may live. So, as you can see here, this is not a new commandment. This is in Deuteronomy 30. So, in the New Covenant, New Testament. And I believe John even mentioned. He said, "I give not you know, I'll give you a new commandment." You know what I'm saying? But it's it's written. You feel me? And the whole theme, the whole element of it is that, you know, we need to love God with all our heart, mind, body, our soul, and with all our might, all our strength, all our mind. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, that means to obey his voice, to obey his commands. You understand that. And, and so before we can obey him, before we can truly love him and walk in his love, our hearts must be circumcised that we may be able to truly do so. Okay. Now, the circumcision, this circumcision of the heart pertains to the circumcision made without hands in the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So the circumcision that the Most High God is talking about pertaining to the circumcision of the heart in regards to the circumcision made without hands. This is in regards to putting off the body of sins of the flesh, cutting off the old man, cutting off the old ways. You understand what I'm saying? And um, this is done in the spirit, you know, and thus being buried with Christ in baptism and also being risen with him through faith, you know, which we were once dead in our sins and the uncircumcision of our flesh. And we are now made alive together with him through the spirit, through the blessed power of the Holy Spirit. OK, so there is a circumcision in Christ. And today, especially amongst the Hebrew community, many brothers and sisters have not received this circumcision, okay? And this is the this circumcision is done in the spirit. You understand that? So the precepts, as I mentioned, Colossians 2, 11, and Romans chapter 2, verse 29. Now, being in Christ and received the gospel and obeying the gospel, which we are commanded to obey the gospel, one of the first things we commanded to do is to repent, to turn. And that's what repent means, to turn. So turn away from our sin, repent. You understand that? And as Peter commanded them, be baptized in the name of Christ, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
You understand? And by that, we are buried with Christ in baptism. OK, and also being risen with him through faith in the spirit. We which were once dead in our sins, that would be the uncircumcision of our flesh. Now we're made alive together with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 2, 12 through 13, St. John chapter 6, I believe, verse 63. OK, be baptized and i'm referring to water baptism so therefore all that hear this message i encourage and beseech amen that you obey the gospel and circumcise your hearts i say obey the gospel first and foremost repenting of all sins and circumcise your hearts you understand that so if you are not baptized then you are not circumcised and it's not just about just simply going in water, you need understanding that you are a sinner and you need clarity and you need to confess your sin and to repent of your sins. You understand that? And that's crucial for us to move and operate in the love of the Most High God. We cannot do, we can't do no commandments or do anything to please our Father without the Holy Spirit. And if you ain't obeying the Spirit and you're not obeying the gospel, then you can't assume. You understand that, that you're truly walking in that which is pleasing to the Father. Because if your heart not circumcised, then you can't love him. I yeah, definitely want to get verse 16 and 20. So it reads, I, you know, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. Okay. To walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. You hear that? In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. What does it mean to love the Lord thy God? Here is your answer for all the people who are making excuses to not obey God. This is an hour and time which of utmost is important for us to obey him. And it's going to get harder for those who do obey him. You understand that there'll be a persecution. We'll be tried. But at the end of the day, these commandments are in our heart is nigh unto us as is mentioned in verse 14 but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it so if the commandments ain't in your mouth if the commandments ain't in your heart then you can't do it and you can't force them to be in your own heart the most how god gonna circumcise and he gonna work on, on that heart we have to obey so our part is the submission so we must submit to his will willingly. You understand that? And if we resist his will, then that is sin because that's stubbornness and stubbornness is as idolatry. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, what we have to do is listen, you know, submit and obey. You feel me? As the Holy Spirit leads us and the Most High is working on our hearts through this process. You feel me? And, um, you know, it, it just starts there with repentance with acknowledgement, with repentance, you know, and with turning away from your sin and having understanding and clarity of why you need to turn. It's important. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 30 touches on deliverance, you know, and the most I like we need to repent and repent from the heart because if we ain't serious, he ain't, he, you know, he's going to do his word and fulfill what he said he's going to fulfill, but it's our part and our job to do what he's telling us to do. And if you get a moment, read whole Jeremiah 30, you know, and it's really going to it really going to bring a lot more clarity and really be a blessing unto you. OK, you understand. But love the Lord thy God. What that means is to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. You understand. So he let us know that he just said a blessing before us and curses. You understand that we know Christ has made a curse for us, delivering us from the curse of the law and um, in, in dying in our place, you know, and took on the curses due unto us in his body and put him to death, you know, and his righteousness, which he lived and all the blessings due unto him is imputed unto us by faith. But we know faith without works is dead. You understand? You can believe all day long, but if you don't do nothing or your life don't change in regards to your beliefs, then what you manifest and what you bring forth, the deeds and works that you do, going to prove where you stand. Do you truly believe? Are your works lining up with what you believe? Is your lifestyle lining up with what you say you believe? You know what I'm saying? And um, that's crucial in the times that we're in. You know what I'm saying? Because we're supposed to judge the tree by the fruit. You understand? So in a time where there's a bunch of fake and false believers, we don't know who's what. 
We don't know what the, you know, we have to use the word of God. We have to try the spirits as the scriptures say, but we need not lean to our own understanding. So we got to be sharp and we need to be sharper, as sharp as we can be. We need to be patient, you know, and let the most high work these things out unto his glory. But I just want to point all that out. The first greatest commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. It literally means to obey his voice and his commands. And that's going to be your expression of your love back to him and your will, worship and servitude to him. And I just want to share that with y'all. Pray it be a blessing. I want to tell y'all, surely a blessing unto me, been a blessing to the family. And um, we, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, you understand.